if biology created a few hacks on top of which consciousness and cognition and some of the things we love about human beings was created, it makes you wonder what kind of beauty in the complexity can yeah, create so through digital fabrication. There's, there's an early peek at that, which is um, there's a misleading term, which is generative design. Mm -hmm. Generative design is where you don't tell a computer how to design something, you tell the computer what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work, that only works in limited subdomains. Uh, you can't do really complex functionality that way. Mm -hmm. The one place it's matured though is topology optimization for structure. So let's say you wanted to make a bicycle mm -hmm. or a table. Um, you describe the loads on it and it figures out how to design it. And what it makes are beautiful, organic looking things. These are things that look like they grew in a forest mm -hmm. and they look like they grew in a forest because that's sort of exactly what they are, that they're, they're, they're solving the ways of how you handle loads in the same way biology does. And so you get things that look like trees and shells and all of that. And so that's a peak at this transition to, um, fr from we, we design to, to, we teach the machines how to design. What can you say about, because you mentioned cellular automata earlier, about from this example you just gave, and in general, the observation you can make by looking at cellular automata, that there's a, from simple rules and simple building blocks can emerge arbitrary complexity. Do we understand, like, do you understand what that is, how that can be leveraged? So understand what it is, is much easier than it sounds. I complained about Turing's machine making yes. a physics mistake, but Turing never intended it to be a computer architecture. Um, he used it just to prove uh, results about uncomputability. Mm -hmm. um, what, what Turing did on what is computation is exquisite, is gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, he, he gave us our notion of computational universality. And something that sounds deep and turns out to be trivial is it's really easy to show almost everything is computationally universal. Mm -hmm. So Norm Margulis wrote a beautiful paper um, with Tom Toffoli showing in a cellular, a cellular automata world is like the game of life where you just move tokens around. Um, they showed that modeling billiard balls on a billiard table with cellular automata is a universal computer. Mm -hmm. to, to be universal, you need a persistent state, you need a nonlinear operation to interact them, um, and you need connectivity. So that's what you need to show computational universality. Mm -hmm. So they showed that a CA mod modeling billiard balls is a universal computer. Um, Chris Moore went on to show that instead of chaos, let's uh, see, um, Turing showed there are computable, there are problems in computation that you can't solve, that, that they're harder than you can't predict. They're actually in a deep reason that they are unsolvable. Um, Chris Moore showed it's very easy to make physical systems that are uncomputable, that what, what the physics system does, just bouncing balls and surfaces, you can make systems that solve uncomputable problems. And so Almost any non-trivial physical system is computationally universal. Mm -hmm. So the first part of the answer to your question is, you know, this comes back to how, you know, my comment about how do you bootstrap a civilization. Y you just don't need much to be computationally universal. So then th there isn't today a notion of like fabricational universality or fabricational complexity. The sort of numbers I've been giving you about you eating lunch versus the chip fab, sort of that, that, that's in the same spirit of what Shannon did. But once you connect computational universality to kind of fabricational universality, you then get the ability to grow and adapt and evolve. Because um, that and, evolution happens in the physical space. Yeah, and that's and, ultimately. And so that's why, you know, for me, the heart of this whole conversation is morphogenesis. So just to come back to that, um, what Turing ended his sadly cut short life studying was how genes give rise to form. 
so so how how the 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 small amount of it relatively in effect small amount of information in the genome can give rise to the complexity of who you are mm -hmm. and and that that that's where it, what resides is this molecular intelligence which is first how to describe you but then how to describe you such that you can exist and you can reproduce and you can grow and you can evolve and so you know that that's the seat of our molecular intelligence the maker revolution in biology yeah it it, it really is um it, it really is and and that that's where you can't separate communication computation and fabrication you can't separate computer science and physical science you can't separate hardware and software they all intersect right at that place <laughs>